So, Amber, it's really interesting. Um, I was reading an article by the ABC that a Thai university student was caught using spy cameras and smartwatches to cheat on a medicine exam. How crazy. That's insane. It's something you'd hear from a movie. Yeah, like, I feel like it's something all students would contemplate at a moment when you're like, oh, my God, I can't study for maths or history anymore. But would you actually ever do it? Oh, my gosh. Well, it's not fair. When I was doing my WACE exams back in year 12, this was way before the age of all these smart glasses and smart watches, all the technology. So if I wanted to cheat on a test, I'd have to sneakily hide my notes on a water bottle or hide them on, like, I don't know, a pencil sharpener. It's never going to happen, hey. It's really interesting with the changing technology and how accessible these spy cameras or glasses are. Um, Are universities and schools going to have to crack down on it? Oh, surely, because technology is going to just keep evolving. And with that, I can imagine these sorts of devices are going to be getting cheaper and, like you say, more accessible. No wonder students are getting tempted to buy these sorts of things. I know I certainly would be. (laughs) I'm not a cheater, but I mean, if I did leave my studying to the last minute, I would be somewhat tempted. So to talk further about the issue, we're now joined with Dr. Ritesh Chug, who is a senior lecturer in the School of Engineering and Technology at the Central Queensland University. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Ritesh. Thank you. We were really interested to hear whether um, you do think it's a right move for universities in Australia to ban um, this sort of technology. So things like smart watches and your Apple watches during exam situations. I think it is a very good move. In fact, in Australia, the the movement to ban smartwatches started last year. Subsequent to that, I think must have been August or September last year, um, Monash University, La Trobe, they banned smartwatches as well in their exams. Because um, smartwatches are, I mean, I see them as the tool which allows us access to information. Now, that information could be text that you've stored on your watch. It could be images. And these watches also provide internet connectivity. So it is definitely a good move to ban smart watches if educational institutions still haven't done it. And technology is evolving so quickly. How can universities keep up with um, the next device students are going to use to, say, cheat if they want to? That is a very good question. And I think a ban should really apply to any device that has the capacity to store, receive and transfer information. You know, so far we were only thinking of smartwatches. And all of a sudden, after this Thailand incident has come to light, you know, the attention now has moved to smart glasses. Mm. So one of the things um, after the ban on smartwatches last year, in fact, some exam halls and uh, the administrators have said no watches allowed at all. No watches. So that includes traditional watches also. Oh, that's really and interesting. Reason, and the reason for that is you can't expect an exam invigilator to actually look at people's watches in an environment and decide whether it's actually a smartwatch or a traditional watch. Certainly so, interesting because obviously um, I, I always used to look at my watch to check how yeah, much time mm-hmm. I've got um, left and sort of time myself for certain yeah. bits. Yeah, I mean the guidelines that, that, that were given to exam invigilators was to keep writing the exam on a whiteboard, some, uh, sorry, the time on a whiteboard somewhere so students can stay abreast of the time. But like I said, you know, it is really impractical also for the exam invigilators to look at everyone's watches and Mm. then decide whether it's a smartwatch or a traditional watch. Hence, that blanket ban. Coming back, I think a ban is necessary on any device that allows us to store, receive or transmit information. Yeah, certainly. It's really interesting because when I think back to uh, when I was a student, even um, in year 12, studying for my uh, Mm -hmm. WACE exams, um, that was quite a few years ago now. And the main ban we had, this was way before, you know, the Apple Watches and whatnot. uh, Kids were writing little notes on like the backs of their calculators (laughs) and on on the labels of water bottles. And now it's becoming this whole ban on technology. It's just amazing to see how it's all evolved and how crafty Mm -hmm. students are getting, I guess. True. But then, see, um, you're talking of people writing notes on their calculators or taking small pieces of paper. 
But then when the ban on mobile phones was introduced, right, you're not allowed to take a mobile phone into an exam environment. Mm-hmm. And the acceptance was almost sudden because all of a sudden people said, well, here is a phone and it's not good for an exam environment. Yeah. And I think that sort of acceptance has slowly crept into the mind of administrators, educational administrators, people who actually develop these policies. Because um, there was some um, Victorian uh, VCE, the exams, um, I think last year, yes. In spite of mobile phone bans in VCE, cheating in exams is almost doubled yeah. in comparison to 2014. And I guess the now, thing in, is, if people want to cheat, they're going to, aren't they? They're yes, going to find that's a way. True because, see, you, you've got bans on mobile phones in exam and this, you know, talking of VCE again. Nearly 30% of cheating matters involve the use of a mobile phone, which is surprising, isn't it? Yeah. Because there is a ban on mobile phones and still these students were caught cheating using their mobile phones. Yeah, and I guess what's interesting too is that um, it's so affordable now, technology. Most people do have an iPhone or, or they're able to, say, access something on the internet that could help them. So it's quite easy for now them to yeah. buy, like, spy things. Even or- before, we were on eBay and um, we could find, like, little spy glasses and little spy watches just on eBay and they were so cheap. So, yeah, there's no doubt I can understand why students would be tempted to uh, buy these sort of spy devices to help them pass an exam. I call this the hidden market for smart watches and smart glasses. Now, obviously, smart glasses is new, but the hidden market for smart watches has existed for the last two or three years now. In fact, um, these companies that sell the watches actually promote themselves as watches that can be used for cheating. Mm. It clearly says, watches for cheating. Mm-hmm. And when you go to that website, the front page says, a device, a watch for cheating. Gosh. <laughs> And you, you, you saw some watches on eBay. You can actually go to Amazon as well. And Amazon, the, the, the blurb for those watches says, watch for cheating. God. So the, the market is there. The resources that we have to spend in trying to enforce these bans. And what I think, what really needs to be done is to look at changing the assessment strategies. Yes, we can introduce these bans and we've introduced these bans on mobile phones. So coming back to a mobile phone, you know, if 30% of all cheating matters involve the use of a mobile phone, the question is what can be done? Yes. What I think, and when I say change assessment strategies, and if you look at the Thailand example as well, one of the problems that that has come to the forefront from that issue is there is a a lot of rote learning that's encouraged. And that rote learning gets tested in an exam as well. And hence, if students have got notes, they tend to use them. But if we can eliminate that rote learning element from an exam, and the exam questions shouldn't focus on rote learning, but rather focus on critique and analysis, then we might have a resolution. Yeah, certainly. No, it's some really interesting stuff. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really interesting hearing uh, the your concept and what you think about the issue. And I'm interested to see how the whole thing's going to wow. unfold as technology just keeps growing and growing. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Laura and Amber. Oh, no, thank you, Dr. Ritesh. Thank we you. really appreciate it.